So I attended a Microsoft Surface event and witnessed one of the most unique all-in-ones I have ever seen. It's called the Surface Studio and I want to share with you guys an overview and my hands-on experience with this exciting new category that Microsoft is exploring. The pricing for the Surface Studio is $2,999 for the entry level, $3,499 for the mid-range, and $4,199 for the maxed out model. Pre-orders are starting now with the entry and mid-level configuration shipping in December. The maxed out model will be shipping in early 2017. Microsoft stated that they will be releasing these in limited quantities. However, it seems that this is going to be a pretty popular all-in-one desktop specifically for graphic designers and digital artists. The entry-level model comes with a one terabyte rapid hybrid drive, which is a combination of a hard disk drive and an SSD. You also get a Gen 6 Intel Core i5 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 2 gigabyte NVIDIA 965M GPU. The mid-range model comes with the same one terabyte rapid hybrid drive and GPU. However, you get the Intel Core i7 and 16 gigabytes of RAM as an increase in performance. The highest end model comes with a two terabyte rapid hybrid drive, an Intel Core i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a four gigabyte NVIDIA 980M GPU. All of the models come with a 28 inch 4.5K display with a resolution of 4500 by 3000 with a DPI of 192. The Surface Studio's display is a 10-bit panel with Adobe sRGB, DCI-P3, and vivid color profiles. Each panel is individually calibrated and from what I saw, the resolution and image coming off of it is on point and definitely able to compete with the 5K iMac. The display is incredibly thin. In fact, it's the thinnest monitor on the market to date and it's extremely responsive to touch and it works extremely well with the Surface Pen. Also, they have incorporated a zero gravity hinge for repositioning of the display. How this works is incredibly useful to digital artists and uh, graphic designers. You can go from a standard desktop to lying flat on a table in a matter of seconds. The hinge is easily operable and maintains positioning without any issues. In terms of connectivity, you're looking at four USB 3.0 ports, a full-size SD card slot, and a mini display port plus a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Microsoft also unveiled the Surface Dial, which is an extremely simple looking device but packs a ton of functionality. For instance, I observed several apps that took advantage of this accessory by allowing you to adjust RGB, HBS curves, brush type, stroke, zoom, and rotation, plus much, much more. There was also a music creation application that took advantage of the dial by allowing you to copy and paste compositions, erase specific notes, or adjust rhythms. The stock maps application has a few tricks up its sleeve, like the ability to connect points for instant directions or travel times, and it also uses the dial to zoom in and out, uh, making it easier to find directions and navigation points. The paint application has been updated with the Windows Creators update, allowing users to create 3D models in a matter of minutes. I actually love testing this out and it blew my mind at how fast I was able to create this ugly looking imitation from Monsters Inc. Okay, so here's the thing. Even though this is the most kick-ass all-in-one desktop I have ever seen, I also feel that the computer is outdated by a year before it even ships. Unfortunately, the specs laid out cannot even compete with a $2,000 iMac when you are basing this purchase from an average consumer standpoint. Considering you're also not even getting modern connection ports, it's still stuck on USB 3.0, and it also lacks any type of Thunderbolt connection for external connectivity at high speeds, it appears on paper to be, well, a bit overpriced. With that being said, this is a very niche product, and if you're a digital artist, do a lot of work in Photoshop or Lightroom or you're a graphic designer, um, this might be, you know, a dream come true, especially if you're coming from Wacom tablets. From my hands-on experience, despite these outdated specs, the computer ran flawlessly, so I do give Microsoft that. However, the software did have some glitches, but that's to be expected because it's still running in beta. I even saw people gaming on this thing, and I didn't notice anyone having any issues whatsoever. So what do you guys think? Do you guys like the Surface Studio? Do you think it's a hit, or is it dead on arrival? Let me know in the comment section, as well as if you want to see a full review of this machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this coverage on the Surface Studio. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the notification squad so you don't miss any future videos, and of course, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on all my social media platforms, and of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Be easy.